Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tinkering with Tiny Humans. We have my tiny human Lainey here today and we are very excited to try out some of our Christmas presents. She got this really neat discovery food science lab and Lainey loves food and she loves baking and she loves science and when all those things come together, minds will be blown. So it's this a cute little kit. It's got this little fun graduated cylinder and a silicone covered whisk and a pipette and some little containers and a smiley egg strainer and some like shapes to do stuff. So we are gonna make peanut brittle today and we are going to learn about converting sugar and oxidation and disaccharides and all kinds of neat stuff. Sound like a plan? No idea what any of those Well, we'll read all about it. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. So we are going to do some recipe following today and following a recipe is kind of like a chemical formula. And in baking, that's really important. Less so with cooking. You can be a little bit different with some ingredients, but with baking, it's pretty precise. So we're gonna do as precise as we can of measuring and combining and uh, see how it turns out. All right, go ahead. What do we do first? Uh, so grease a baking. Grease a baking sheet or cover it with parchment, parchment paper and set it aside. We did that, yep, that's so, over there. Mm -hmm. Two, mix sugar and water in the medium saucepan and cook it over the oh, over high heat, stirring occasionally until it reaches a rich gold color. Mm. Okay, let's do that first. And uh, so we've got a nonstick pan. We've got an induction burner here. And here's our ingredient list. So how much granulated sugar do we want to put in there? Two cups. Okay. So unfortunately, I... I Just put it in the chalice. Put it in the chalice. Oh, put the peanuts in the chalice? Okay. Why do we have a Lego chalice, Lainey? Mm, you'll see them. Okay. I'm putting the peanuts into the... Chalice. You are a wackadoodle. Two cups of sugar in here, please. Okay. What? What is in your sugar jar? <laughs> Why is Bernie in the sugar jar? He is returned. Bernie's returned? Okay, he's gonna hang out over here on Peanut Mountain? Yeah. I'll right, put him on Peanut Mountain. <laughs> oh, he's a little top heavy. Oh, he's floating! He's levitating on a Peanut Mountain, yes. So you need to take that scoop and add a little bit more on top and then scrape it flat. Mm-hmm, yeah, very good. Okay, good, and then... It's a little concave, but I didn't give you a knife, so we're good. All right, pour that in there. Excellent. That's one cup. Okay, good. Very good. And then we need one half cup of water. Yeah. Looks like milk. Kind of does. It's disintegrating. Thank you. So you can only dissolve so much sugar in water and then it won't take any more. Then it's called saturated. So mix that around a little bit and then we're gonna turn on the heat and we're gonna start to cook this down. We're gonna reduce it. Cook yeah. Sugar? Yes. Right, try to get it nicely incorporated before we turn the heat on. All right, so maximum power here is 1800 watts, and we want it not to be burning. So let's get something to put your spoon on because you're dripping sugar water everywhere. Yeah. Yes. That'll work. All right, we'll make it 1600, see what that works. So if you have a liquid and a solid, and the liquid will dissolve the solid in it, we say that that liquid is a solvent. In everyday life, water is a good solvent for lots of stuff, like removing dirt, um, sometimes you wanna add some surfactants and detergents to it. Yeah, surfactants keep, um, help dirt rise to the surface and get off of the thing they're attached to. So detergents and surfactants help uh, water dissolves stuff better, but water is a good solvent for lots of food products. What we're waiting to happen is for the sugar to change form. So right now it's super clear, but as we continue to cook it, uh, it tells us that it's gonna go undergo a chemical change. 
So it says granulated sugar is a disaccharide made from simple sugars, fructose and glucose. As it's heated, it breaks down into these base sugars and then they react with each other to form new compounds. When more water is cooked away, it begins to brown and develop richer flavors due to oxidation. Heating it too much will burn it and turn it bitter and eventually into pure carbon. Try tasting raw granulated sugar and then the caramel. Notice the difference in flavor? Is it making caramel? Yes. It's gonna be a hard kind so that when this thing sets up, it's gonna go like snap like a piece of bark. So It'll be like candy cane uh, consistency when it cures. Yes. On the box it says soon we're gonna be making homemade pizza, popcorn and donuts. What? That'll be awesome. Okay, yeah. What are some of your favorite foods? Donuts, bacon, mm -hmm. rice, mm -hmm. sausage, yeah. steak. Everything. <laughs> yeah, we do fun Fridays and in the mornings on the way to school we get donuts. So we try to pick a different donut place in the local area every time. It's kind of fun. Sometimes we can't because, well, no, we have a system now where Jake picks one week and Lainey picks another week because they can never seem to decide. But whoever's the picker has the final word. All right, I think it's starting to get thicker. Notice how like when I swish it back and forth, it leaves like a little valley in the pan. Yeah, it's really hot, so make sure you don't touch it. Oh, yeah. And make sure you're working these outside puddles back to the inside because this induction burner is not really big enough for this pan, so it's really only heating up this area here. How can you tell what area is being heated and what area is not being heated as much? Because it's starting to boil. Yeah, so don't touch it for a second. Watch what's happening. See how right about here there's a ring where the bubbles are forming? Mm -hmm. And out here there isn't any bubbles? because that is the same footprint as that induction coil. So that's the only place that it's putting heat into the pan is where that induction coil overlaps. So an induction burner is nifty. It doesn't get hot itself. It's a coil that pulses electricity and that creates a magnetic field inside the metal of the pan and it actually heats up the pan itself, not the cooktop. I'm quickly stirred because it was starting to get, oh, it's getting brown. <laughs> All right, we're gonna stir this in. I think we're probably really close. Maybe just a couple minutes. All right, I'm gonna hand the peanuts over to you. I'll pour in the chalice one when it's time. And you pour in that one, okay? All right, what do you think? I Is think this a good color? Great. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna turn the temperature down just a little bit so it doesn't solidify. How much, like one? Yeah, no, turn it down to half. So what's half of 18? Eight. No. Nope. Six. No. Nope. Nine. Yep, so make it 900. 900? Yeah, just hit minus. Again, again, again. Drugi. Yeah, very good. All right, so I'm gonna pour in, I'm gonna pour in the chalice peanuts. Okay, and you pour in, I'll reassemble the chalice. You pour in the other ones. Okay, very good. Let's stir this in, get them all incorporated. Bernie, you had yours, excellent. So let's turn this off. Can you grab the pan and put it on top of the burner? Uh, Quickly, put the pan on top of the burner. It's off, so it won't be hot. All right, and then hold the parchment paper out. Put it curly side down. All right, we're gonna let that cool and then we'll check back with you in a couple minutes and we'll do a taste test and we'll talk about how it went. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Welcome back. Uh, you can see that our peanut brittle turned out super awesome. It's nice and shiny and solidified. And uh, you can see before it was super drippy and now it is. Here's what we learned about this. I looked this up and interestingly, even though this reaction has been around for a really long time, scientists don't fully understand it. So I tried to look it up and here's what I learned. Um, the Maillard reaction, it's a French word, um, so if you pronounce it properly, I think you leave off the end of the word, so it's like Maillard, 
reaction, but we say Maillard. Um, it occurs when part of the sugar molecule, called the aldehyde group, reacts with the nitrogen part of the protein molecule, which is an amino group. And the resulting series of reactions is not well understood even by food scientists, but it leads to the brown color and many flavorful compounds that are yet to be identified. Caramelization is what happens to pure sugar when it reaches 338 degrees Fahrenheit. A few tablespoons of sugar put in a pan and heated will eventually melt and 338 degrees Fahrenheit starts to turn brown. At this temperature, the sugar compounds begin to break down and new compounds form. So this nutty brown flavor, we started off with pure white sugar like this. And after we cooked it at the right temperature, it turned into this dark brown and differently flavored sugar. And that reaction is the same kind that puts the crunchy bits on your steak when you grill it. You know, those really nice grill marks taste extra good. That's also the Maillard reaction. We're gonna have Lainey tell us if she can tell the difference. That is pure white sugar, granulated sugar. You know how that tastes? Now taste a little bit of the caramelized sugar. Try that, tell me what you think. Super crunchy. crunchy. Well, other than crunchy, does it taste different? Yeah. I think it tastes like smoky and nutty. It tastes that way even if the peanuts are in there. So they kind of complement each other. The nuts add to the nutty flavor of the caramel. So I think it's so cool that we were able to make our own candy. And we have some pictures that we'll share with you um, of us pulling out long threads of sugar and Lainey eating it like spaghetti. So it was kind of fun, yeah. So did you enjoy this project? Yeah. We made our own candy, so that was cool. And we learned about um, dissolving sugar in water and the Maillard reaction, which makes delicious steaks and peanut brittle. Isn't it cool the same chemical process makes both delicious steaks and candies? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you have any projects you would like Lainey and I to try, uh, we would really like to because we like doing projects together. And if you'd be so kind as to like and subscribe, you'll get notifications when we do fun projects together and hopefully you'll try them with your family. We, um, we're really glad that you joined us and check in next time. We'll see you then. Bye.